four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary entertainment, entertainment, and sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion now. Here is Steve Malsberg. All right, folks, so welcome back. And uh, as mentioned, uh, we are uh, in the process of waiting to uh, speak with uh, Congressman Steve King on uh, a bunch of issues. Of course, um, the president, in case you haven't heard, and we've talked about it on this show, but the president who will not go to the Mexican border because I'm the president and I don't have to do anything I don't want to do, even though Democrats as well as Republicans have requested that he go. Uh, the president had a photo op today in Colorado um, with the governor of Colorado playing pool and drinking beer. Now, I got to tell you, uh, yesterday on this show, during the panel, uh, Rick Unger of, uh, of Steel and Unger uh, was on the, uh, on the panel, and we were discussing whether or not the president should go to the border. And he said, look, you know, he's the president. I'm sure he has a schedule. And I said, wait a minute. Yeah, of course he has a schedule. He's going to be at three fundraisers in Texas. Of course, he has a schedule. You brought up the schedule. I say he's probably got better things to do, like play basketball or watch, you know, the free agent market in the NBA or, or something else. And he said, are you saying the president is going to play basketball? I said, I don't know. You brought up his schedule, Rick. I don't know. So we went at it back and forth, back and forth. And who knew that I would be so correct? All right, he didn't play basketball. But he had the nerve. I mean, what do you call it? Do you call it insensitivity? Do you call it in your face? Do you call it um, um, uh, uh, chutzpah? Do you call it arrogance? What, do, what would you call it? I'd love to know what one would call it when you say, I'm not going to the border. I will not go to the border. So you, you make it a point to show people you're playing pool and having a beer? I don't know. I mean, it's got to be one of the aforementioned, one of those uh, uh, adjectives or uh, one of the terms I, I, I threw out there has to be applicable, right? Maybe they're all applicable. Maybe it's chutzpah and arrogance and, and insensitivity and everything else. But you know who we're going to find out from? Um, let's uh, forget the, uh, the video and let's go right to Congressman uh, Steve King. Hello, Congressman, sir. Hello, how are you doing up there, Steve? So good to talk to you again. It's been too long. So here I am describing and, and, and trying to reach for the right label for a president who with, says to people from his own party and the opposition party, I will not go to the border. I will not look at this humanitarian crisis. I have no interest in it. But makes it a point to have a photo op playing pool and drinking beer. What do you say about a, a, a president who does that? Oh my gosh! I didn't know that. Uh, oh yeah, it's bad with the enough. governor with the governor of Colorado. Uh, the image of the image of the president is playing golf, and uh, the closest he, the you know, the beer summit when he gets himself in a bind, but not playing pool and shooting, or uh, shooting pool and drinking beer when there's a humanitarian crisis on the border that he has caused and brought out. I don't know what we call that, Steve, but it, as as I watch this piece after piece of this, it's getting harder and harder to explain these things away as being just mistakes made by a president uh, the, the more the pattern comes together the more it looks like it could be willful and uh, there is i don't have any doubt that he is the guy that's opened up this border they have advertised down in central america mexico and central america the fact of it is this that if you can get into america and you don't commit a felony this president will not deport you that is we've gone from sanctuary cities to sanctuary states now we are a sanctuary nation and uh, the, the humanitarian crisis that he's brought about is that. And I believe now that he is poised to extend this unconstitutional DACA position that allows for people to stay in America illegally until he should decide that they should go. He's never going to decide that they go. If he extends this age group, it was those who were in the country before they were 18 and before December 31st of 2011. If he extends that, he's essentially granted amnesty to everybody that's not a felon, and he is poised to do that, in my opinion. This president, can we, we cannot presume that the Constitution means anything to him except an inconvenience, 
Neither does the law mean anything to him except an inconvenience. Let me ask you about this request for what was first reported a few days ago is $2 billion. Now it's up to about $4 billion. And if it goes through, which uh, you'll tell me if you think it will, and what, if you would support it, it's going to be repetitive. Um, this hiring of judges uh, and building of facilities, uh, isn't that just a waste of time? Because once people, once, once these people come across illegally or given their letter of, uh, uh, you know, to come back or whatever it's called, they disappear. So what good are more judges and more facilities? Well, that pays off the Maldef and the La Raza attorneys and the president's base that are a bunch of lawyers that have been working for a long time uh, to advocate for illegal aliens and opening our borders. So you see, it, you see it as a payoff? I do. And, and uh, what are the prospects of uh, the House uh, approving this uh, request? I think the prospects are very slim that that will happen. Um, it, I took it from our leadership's presentation this morning that they, they believed that we needed some kind of resources to go in there to address the humanitarian crisis and that we needed to work and to do something in the next couple of weeks. But uh, the pushback that came from the microphone, including from me, was exactly the opposite. This is a presidential cause crisis. He has the resources to solve the problem. If he's not going to close that border, then I'm this. I'm calling upon the border governors to call up their National Guard, order their National Guard to the border. They're the commanders in chief of their National Guard, seal the border. And, and this president's not going to. Think what two and a half years of President Obama's sanctuary nation turns into. It won't be any longer the question of whether we can deport 11 million people. It will be tens of millions more, and the question will be how many billion people can we let into the United States uh, under the circumstances that he has. And I say that term billion, I didn't just pull it out of the air. There's seven billion people on the planet, and over half of them would like to be in America. Absolutely. Are they, you, let me just uh, get a little clarity on, on what you said. Uh, you weren't uh, unclear. I, I, my, my ears were unclear. Uh, and that is that uh, leadership, you believe leadership wanted to give the president, uh, if not all the money, what, some of the money? Well, they didn't come to an amount, but it was, um, it was an indication that they think that we need to address this humanitarian crisis and that there was some resources with some type of con provisions or conditions that might be attached. Would to that still. be offset conditions or new money? They did not take a position on that, and I think at a minimum it would have to be offset. Of course, the president wants new money. That would be borrowed from the Chinese, of course. Uh, <laughs> right. That's the situation we're in, Steve. And, and I, you know, when, when, uh, when you have leadership, and they're, and they're listening to one side of this argument. Here's something that has shifted the politics in D.C. and Washington, D.C., and that is that we all went home over the 4th of July break for two weekends and a week in between. We did parades. We got out there, and everywhere we went, people would step up and say, seal the border, stop the bleeding at the border. Um, the, the only way you can cure this is first you've got to, you've got to seal the border. And I'm convinced this president won't. In his $3.7 billion, there is nothing in there that will seal the border, nothing. There might be a little bit of a camp or a place where they can house some of these illegals, but uh, the, most of this goes to, I'll just say, feckless spending for judges and attorneys. And think of this president who uh, believes, apparently, that you know everybody in America has some kind of a right to rent subsidy, heat subsidy, an Obama phone, an Obamacare health insurance policy that you own, paid for by the taxpayers, and now everybody has to have their own lawyer. That's how bad this is getting with this president. Meanwhile, we don't our border security people, and we're spending a number greater than $7 million a mile on our southern border. We're building new interstate highway through Iowa cornfields, by the way, buying the, real, the, the right of way and building the interstate, finishing it all for right at $4, four uh, million a mile. We're spending seven, $7 million or more on our southern border to guard it, and we're getting something less than 25% efficiency down there. Yeah. We could build an interstate for 2,000 miles down there every year and have money left over, and then the Border Patrol could drive their Humvees back and forth on the interstate, at least, in a nice, convenient way and guard the border. Congressman, let me ask you about this uh, Bush-era law that was signed uh, and that was designed uh, to protect uh, uh, or to, to, to uh, discourage uh, child trafficking from these Central American countries. Uh, they're now citing this to the administration is as one of the reasons, or if not the reason, why these kids can't be sent back immediately. Um, that's not the, how that law was intended. Now, two things here. One, uh, will the House vote to repeal that law? And two, isn't this a president who routinely uh, decides which parts of laws he'll enforce and won't enforce and has done so over and over with immigration law specifically? So can he just 
true to form, just say we're not going to enforce that law anymore? Well, under the president's standards, the answer to that is yes. I am. Uh, I do think that Congress needs to adhere to the Constitution and the letter and the rule of law. Well, did though, that come up today, sir, about uh, repealing the, that that Bush era law? It was alluded to, but it wasn't it wasn't discussed in very much depth. But I will tell you that over the last three weeks, Steve, I, I've been putting together the language to do that. And uh, the conditions are this: that in that bill, which um, the human trafficking bill was really generated by Dianne Feinstein out of California. And um, it passed through the House and the Senate on voice vote with little or no debate. Nobody really examined it. It was pushed through when Nancy Pelosi was speaker in 2008. And it, it sets up in a program with contiguous countries to accept their unaccompanied minors back. And that has been negotiated with Mexico. And that's working pretty good with Mexico, and as you know. But the non-contiguous countries, it's a different, there is no such provision. So the bill I've drafted sets up the similar provisions that, that exist in the bill for Mexico for the non-contiguous countries, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and others. Um, I put that into the congressional record last night as I gave a floor speech for about, oh, I'd say 50 minutes, 40 minutes, and uh, I put it into the congressional record, but I did not file the bill because I'm afraid that if we send that bill over, if we pass it in the House, send it to the Senate, the Senate will attach the Gang of Eight uh, on it as an amendment ah, and I send see. it back to it. Yeah. Congressman, yeah, that's a shame that that's, uh, that's a fear, but it's probably uh, a legitimate concern. Great to talk to you again, sir, and uh, about a, a ter terribly horrific situation. Uh, we'll speak to you again soon, and thank you for your time. Thanks, and I just encourage those governors, call up your own National Guard. Yeah. That's the only way to fix it, Steve. Gotcha. Congressman Steve King calling for border governors to call up their own National Guard, send them to the border uh, right here on the Steve Malsberg Show. The panel is next right here on the Steve Malsberg Show on Newsmax Television.